Welcome to the Cross the Line Podcast. My name is Carlos Smith, and today's episode is sponsored by KB's Car Care on 321 North Main Street in Jonesville, South Carolina. They offer hand car wash, vacuum, and clean interior. Coming soon, full detail will also be available. Well, it's actually available now. While you wait on your vehicle, customer seating is available as well as the dining area. They're open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., so make sure you stop by. Today's episode is also sponsored by Charlene's Home Cooking on 1136 East Blackstock Road in Moore, South Carolina. Charlene's Home Cooking is a family restaurant that cooks like grandma with fresh veggies and meats cooked to order. You can do a meat with two sides, a meat with three sides, or a veggie plate along with sweet tea, Kool-Aid, and lemonade. Cakes, pies, and cobbler are also available for dessert. She wants you to feel at home anytime you stop by, so come by on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday from 11 to 6, and Friday and Sunday from 11 to 7. Everything is fresh and from the heart, so make sure you stop by. So thank you guys for sponsoring this episode of the Cross the Line Podcast once again, and also... Thank you to everyone who has been supporting my book, F School Life is Your Best Teacher. It's also available on Amazon as well as my website, carloskaysmith.com. If you haven't got it, please make sure you get your copy. And today, we have two very special guests with us. Once again, for the Across the Line podcast, um, we have the owners of She Made Me Clean, Miss India and Mr. Frederick Bates. How are y'all? Good. Wonderful. Yeah, we appreciate y'all uh, stopping by with us today. Um, kind of like I was telling y'all before we um, start this interview, um, when you asked me how did I find out about it, I was like, you had a lot of, you got a big fan base, a lot of followers and a lot of supporters, um, which is great. Um, so I was just seeing people just constantly just sharing and sharing it. And um, I'm always looking for entrepreneurs because I believe that's something we need. It was like a platform for our people um, to have someone positive, to do something positive, to, uh, you know, come on and talk about their business and kind of get, uh, let people know what made them want to do their business, how they got started and everything. So once I just seen everybody just constantly sharing, I said, you know what, let me just reach out to her and see if there's something she would be interested in coming on. And I see you had a team with team behind you. So I was like, you know what, it would be a great platform for y'all to come on. So I appreciate y'all coming on to, you know, share your story about what made you want to start your business. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. You know, so kind of starting out, how, how did this, um, She Made Me Clean actually come about? Well, she made me clean as a cleaning business. And um, when I started, I was working at Magnum Seating in Moore, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And ever since I worked there, I always started different hustles. So I looked into cleaning and I started, I wanted to start a cleaning business and I wanted my cleaning business to be different from the other cleaning business I saw online. Mm -hmm. So I started it, everything worked out well. And then I asked him, did he want to do a moving business? So he bought a box truck and we started the movie business. Mm -hmm. And was it, uh, so how, how long have you actually been in business? Um, a year today. A year today? Oh, okay. <laughs> a year <laughs> today. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Already. But, um, so when you started out, did you initially plan for it just to be like a, just a side hustle or did you want it to be like your full time? I wanted it to be my full time job. Yeah. Yes. I, when I quit my job, I plan on not going back. I would right. never go work for nobody else. Yes, I know that feeling. So, how, <laughs> so how, how was that initial conversation when, you know, when she brought that to you and said, you know, I want to start my own business? Like, how, how was that conversation? At first, <laughs> it was iffy. And then, but with anything she do, I be behind her, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it's like those, it's like, it's never going to be a perfect time. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I, I, always, I always, to me personally, I always say, you know, it's, something's going to happen to where, it's just like you had this breaking point or something. You just get so tired of your situation to where you just have to kind of like break away and, mm -hmm. and do what you want to do. Um, so did you did you already have the business lined up or did you just say, you know what, you just quit all of a sudden and just went all in? Well, before, um, I had three clients. I started working, I had three clients and I built my way up. And I would, I, every time I had an idea, I called my mom, him, my friends, everybody asked them like what they thought about it before I put it out. So I built my clientele and then I decided like, I'm not going back to work because it's doing well and it made me money for me, for me and my family. Mm -hmm. And you said that you've been in business for one year. So what, what was it like initially when you first started? Because you kind of started like right at the very beginning of the pandemic. Like yeah. People yeah. didn't know what was going on. Yeah. It took it took me it took a lot for people like to book me. I don't think people people were scared to let people come in their house and clean and due to COVID. Mm -hmm. So I started issuing things that can help during COVID. Like we also offered the fogging, the COVID fogging for your home, sanitize your home. I thought of different ways that people would be like, Okay, I'm a booker to make money. Mm -hmm. That was my daily routine to figure out ways to make money. 
And was it, uh, did you feel comfortable, like, when you, once you really got into it, did you know, like, okay, this business is going to actually sustain, or, mm-hmm. or how, how was it? Because I know, I know a lot of times with entrepreneurship, like, you don't know what's going to happen, you just have to step out on faith and, you know, kind of figure things out as you go. But how long did it take you to feel like, okay, I know I'm going to be in this for the, for the long haul? Mm-hmm. Like my fourth house. My fourth oh, wow. house I did, I really, really liked it. Like, I really like making up the beds and making my clients feel happy when they came home. Mm-hmm. So and that you, was my that was my key. Thing. And you do the moving with every every house, like if they need some moving or something? Or? No, nah, the moving came along in September okay. of last year. Okay, so so what made you want to uh, join in, though? Like, what, what, what was like, okay, I, I want to... Join in. Of course, I, I, I encourage her to start her, go ahead with her business. Like, what made you want to go all in as well? Be honest. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I was working at Madden. I was team yeah. lead. And they ain't pay me right. Mm-hmm. They, they tried to give me some change. But I was like, nah, I just. That's how it is, man. And that. I've heard some things about Madden. Yeah, and so I just dealt out and got the truck and that's. Let's roll. Let's let's push it's it to the limit. Probably one of those best feelings, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Investing in yourself and creating your own opportunity. How many do y'all have? Any other employees with you? Yeah, we just yeah. hired two people. Okay. Well, we have. Yeah, I got one with three. The yeah. And I got two people. I saw the lady. I saw this one lady online on the website. Uh, what's what's her name? Miss Rhonda. Rhonda Scott. I think so. Yeah, that's yeah. My yeah. Office manager. Oh, okay. Yeah, so how how was manager. that connection the relationship with her? How did y'all meet her? Oh, how did she come? Um, I've been knowing her all my life, but. <laughs> <laughs> we went on a trip a year ago in June. What was it? I think it was June. Yeah, it was in June, last yeah. June. And we were on a plane, and I just loved our conversation. Like, I loved her vibe, everything about her. And I told her, I was like, I'm going to quit my job. And I'm not going back to work, and I want you to be my office manager. She was like, okay, cool. So <laughs> we started from there, and she's been with me since day one. What would you say for both of you guys, like, some previous, like, skills, like, that you took from your previous job? Um that you carried over into, you know, the cleaning business. Okay, um, I started working at 14 years old. I read a Dario in Union. And um, the managers always used to make us clean up every day. <laughs> every day after work, we clean up, clean up, clean yeah. up. And I got some of my skills from that. And also my mom at home. Oh, where my skills come from. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> had to do the chores for you be able to go outside. Yeah. Had to clean up. Yeah, you had to do that. The only thing that I have that's kind of related to the cleaning is, I remember I was in high school, I was working at Buffalo Seafood. Yeah. So I used to have to wash all the tables, mm-hmm. take out the trash, mm-hmm. and wash the dishes. Mm-hmm. And that was like, man, that was one of them. I was like, I don't know if they can go back to doing that. <laughs> but yeah. at the time, I was just happy to just have a job. job. I, mean, I was like, yeah. man, I just needed some money to you know, put in my pocket so yeah. I could ride. I was I had a, the um the O2 Malibu so right. so on the ride on the weekend <laughs> I needed that little change man but I was like man thank you now I mean I'm thankful I mean you learn from it but I was like man I commend y'all because I don't know if I can go back to you know cleaning up behind people man but this that yeah. moving this is tough with the moving part Dollar General I used to work at Dollar General I was just in the shipping mm-hmm. so it helped me stack the trucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would y'all say is like the hardest part of running your business? The hardest part with me, I like to make people happy. I don't want nobody disappointed in anything I do. So the hardest thing is trying to make, to please everybody. You know, you can't please everybody. But that's my goal. I'm like, I want to please everybody, but you can't. You just can't. Let's see. How I want to put it. Ask ask me again. The hardest, (laughs) um, Part of being an entrepreneur, like running a business, it had good days and had bad days. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, you be like, uh, yeah, like. And, <laughs> and charging like the prices. Yeah. That's the hardest thing too. But you don't want to overcharge people, and then you don't want people to get over on you. Teach yourself because you know your worth. You got to balance that. Right. And that that was a hard thing for me starting out. I'm like. I was cheap. I told you, man. Yeah, I was. You, he always used to be like, babe, you can't do that job for that much. But I'm like, I'm trying to build myself. Mm-hmm. I want everybody to know who I am, and my work gonna speak for itself. Mm-hmm. Do you study? Do y'all study what other entrepreneurs are doing? Of course, you like you. Of course, you can have your own spin on how you do things, but maybe you kind of like study their prices or study how they do certain things and kind of like 
match your stuff up with theirs? Do you purchase I other people? I study other entrepreneurs in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I don't study anyone like here because I want my prices to be high. Mm -hmm. But that, I think that's one of the things. It's, that, that's one of the hardest parts because <laughs> it's like, like you say, you don't want to overcharge, but then of course at the same time, like you know your work. Yeah. You know sometimes I hate to say it, sometimes it comes from our people. Yeah. Sometimes they they the ones they yeah. want the yeah. best for nothing. nothing. For the mm -hmm. no. I mean, nothing. We, it's we, like <laughs> sad we, we've had you. that conversation so many times where, where our people, you know, like. Especially like sometimes it might be family members or something they they might want to hey can you get a discount especially with a cleaning business Ooh. they might want you to come <laughs> for the low or, or call you hey I need y'all hey, to move something real quick but you know I look I out need for my some money and sometimes I look out for my friends <laughs> yeah he, I want my money but I look yeah. see I'm soft with it I like to please everybody mm -hmm. and, I, I, and sometimes of course you know some people may not be as fortunate. But you know, you, right. you want to help some people but still at the same time. You you do have to be firm on your prices because like we said, if we leave here right now, we go to Walmart and something costs twenty dollars. We can't go in there we can't go in there and say, I got ten, can I still have it? Yeah. Don't work like that. It don't work like that. But you still give me trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's one of the hardest parts of definitely one of the hardest parts of being an entrepreneur, um, learning how to say no. Um and we actually had uh this lady, when we were on tour, like I was telling you, Sharon Green, mm -hmm. she she has a cleaning business as well. And she like, one of the things, you know, you can't please everybody. She mm -hmm. did say that. And she's mm -hmm. like, you know, sometimes a client might not be for her. She said, you know, mm -hmm. it might have to be for somebody else. But that's one of those things, like, you just, you can't please everybody. Do the best you can. Um, she She's doing really well, too. She I think she said she started, I think when she started hers, um, I think she had two two employees, then it went up to like twenty five now. Oh, that's great. That's, yeah. what's that's great. Up. But that's she what's started up. the same yeah. way, just started small and but what was crazy, her conversation she said was that she didn't even tell her husband, she just said she came <laughs> back home one day and said, I got a business, I got these clients, I'm I'm rolling. But then he, you know, <laughs> yeah. once she got going, um, everything worked out for yeah. her. Yeah, I told him I was like, Hey babe, you wanna quit your job? <laughs> oh, Cause I had already quit. You had so you want to quit your job? I was like, I got an idea. I, I always have ideas to help other people. Mm -hmm. Always. But I think that's important too um, for entrepreneurs. Of course, um, yeah, you want to quit, but make sure you have something. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to just quit and yeah. just okay. I, and now let me figure mm -hmm. out what I'm gonna do. Like mm -hmm. I don't have nothing lined up at yeah. all. Like you definitely want to have something, something. that you've been working towards. And and even if. It's not what you want to do long term. At least you have something kind of like helping you get on your feet or whatever, yeah. keeping you going mm -hmm. until you figure out what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. um, don't just quit and just like not have a vision or a goal of mm -hmm. what you want to do. So that definitely makes sense of what you guys are doing. So um, growing up, did you guys ever have um, anybody that, that exposed you to entrepreneurship? Well, my mom, she does hair. Okay. Yeah, she's been doing hair for, I think, 33 years now. Mm -hmm. Anybody? I mean, my family, uh, for the most part, they gonna go get it. They hustlers. They just, yeah. Yeah. and too many of them really work a plant. They kind of, mm -hmm. they do their own thing, they hustle and get legit way. And, mm -hmm. But you gotta get it. Yeah. That what the pandemic taught everybody. Should. Yeah. yeah. Be creative. Mm -hmm. Figure out ways to to make money. Um, be different. Be different. Yep. It's okay to be different. Be different. Because I like I was telling you, I like when we was in school, they didn't teach us about entrepreneurship or running a business. Like the, the closest thing that I that I saw, like I said this before, was just seeing my uncle just cutting grass. But I never used the word entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, I just knew he just had Big different reason. businesses that uh, mm -hmm. he would go cut that grass, and then sometimes on weekends, like he would have us watching his cars, or he, we might go. Grab his weed eater and 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 cut help him cut grass and stuff like that. But I didn't really know nothing about anything about you know entrepreneurship or running up my own business. And when I graduated from Upstate, they didn't teach us to run our own business. They just always taught us, you know, when you got this degree, you can climb up the ladder, and yeah. you make six figures and stuff like that. But they never told us about you know having our own. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of what sets us back a lot. Uh, all, a lot of people, but especially our people, like that's what sets us back because I feel like now we're in that era where we're starting to pay attention to it, but before then, like we just saw our people get up and go to work for somebody mm -hmm. else. Go to school, make good grades, go to college. That was the Nobody really told you, be your own boss. Exactly. It was go to school, good grades, 
Go to college. Yeah, school, Get a good job. And school is not for everybody. No, no it's, it's not. It's not. Those things. Like, man, I went. I mean, I I made good grades. I was a A B student, but I mean, it wasn't really. I really wanted to go just to have fun with my friends. That's really yeah. one of the main reasons I went to college. Mm-hmm. And then once I, and I, I write about a lot of it in my book. Like yeah. when was probably my senior year. Like I was telling y'all when I started doing the broadcasting. That's when I was like, man, I can see myself doing this. Because I used to always see Stephen A. and Skip and those guys on TV. I was like, man, I always, I just wonder, like, how they got up there to do that. I didn't know, like, it was a journey, like, the process that they went through. I just used to always see them on TV. So once I started doing it, I was like, man, I like this. I can, I can figure out, I can do something like this, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, once I graduated, that's when I hit that, that, that hole. I was like, man, I need to figure out something. Because, like, he's like, no, no, no. So I was like. You know, create your own opportunity. It's really one of the best things that happen for a lot of people. But do for you guys, the people that you hire, um, is there anything like? Because a lot of times, I know some people may have something on their record or something, and like I say, a lot of these companies they won't hire them. But do you guys believe in like giving them second chances? I mean, of course, it's some yes. things. Yes. Yes. It's yes. some because things that might not be forgivable. Yeah. Like, okay, but it's certain. Everybody things. deserves a second chance. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Everybody. Because Cause what you did ten years ago don't have nothing to what you. Did. You right. can be a different person right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody. But you yeah. know, sometimes they, I don't know why we had a y'all might know Jared Smith. Um, he um he his dad is from his dad is J Rock, and uh from Jonesville out out of Kelton, and he uh he was just saying you know when he. When he tried to get a job up here, they had something. They supposed to have expunged it from his record, but it was still showing that it was on there. Yeah. But this was like, man, I, I that's what I hate about, you know, working for like a major corporation, sometimes, which I don't have anything on my record, but a lot of times stuff like that can hinder you from mm-hmm. you know, yeah. getting a job. Yeah. Do you guys have any mentors on growing up? Like, who did you look up to that kind of helped you along your journey? My mom. I look up to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, yeah. yeah the family mom, business. Yes. The family. Yes. And she still doing hair? Yes. She still does hair. Now, y'all are from yeah, Union, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. High school sweethearts? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> High school yeah, was... Yeah, because we've been together for what? Yeah. 14, 13, 14 years? That's a long yeah. time. Long time. Yeah. yeah. School. I ended up going to... When you became a dear friend. <laughs> I ended up going to Union, you know, I'm from Jonesy when they consolidated us. Okay. So that's what I ended up going okay. yeah. to. Uh, I believe they, that was my last year. That was 07. 07 was so, the last year we was at Jonesville. And, then, and y'all came. And, oh, yeah, because yeah, my brother, I had just he, graduated. he was the first class. They were 08. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. at 08. But yeah. uh, it was, I was like, man, that was, it was different. It, was, it wasn't bad, but, you know, it was just something like we, we enjoyed our little small town. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of speaking of union, though, what would y'all like to see? You know, come back to our area, like to kind of like help it grow. Oh, activities for kids. Mm-hmm. Like, they need something yeah. the kids can do because there's too many kids that's not doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah union needs. Yeah, something that you can do okay. besides. The everyday norm. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. nothing really to do besides the norm. Right. That's why. Um, <laughs> now I do commend TJ. TJ Booker. That's my, my barber. He, yeah. He started oh, yeah. the, the, the baseball. Yeah. 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 That, that was something. Major, yeah. Um, yeah. We needed something like that for the kids. Something yeah. else to help them out. Yeah. Like he's really big on the community. But I definitely say we. It's like it's like you said. It's not a lot for the kids to do. To have fun. Yeah. Just to skate around. And rain, then a lot of times. <laughs> Like, Skate ring messed up, ain't it? Oh, no, but I think half of the flow messed up. Maybe, I'm not sure. I, ain't, I haven't been in a, in a long time. I, I hope it's not. But it, 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 it's something that, that was something for the kids that we needed. Yeah, you know, some know. big air, jump house, or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they always said, man, a lot of the, a lot of people, um, when we had a union this time, we talked the little panel down there, um, a lot of the kids just felt like it's a dead end. Like they don't mm-hmm. have anything to do. So that's why they always want to leave. And we always ask, like, what is it that we can, you know, kind of bring back to our community to kind of like help out, help the kids out and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. maybe, you know, it's something like, I always say, you know, I give kids open invitation if you want to come in and learn something like this um, about media. Because nowadays, um, it's crazy how you can see kids 
uh, especially that ride kid on YouTube making millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Like my, I, oh. When I told you, I said, yeah. kids, by the time they get out of school, like who would have thought that you could just make that kind of money, money on, YouTube. On, on YouTube? But it's it's real. You know, I was like, man, if the kids want to get into the media, um, that'd be something something different. Um, if maybe they want to learn how to get their own cleaning business, they can come under you guys and mm-hmm. learn. Because they definitely would need something like summertime. They might want to make a little, a little money. They do. Make a little yeah, money. I, then I think of that. I was like, mm-hmm. I want to hire young kids. But then yet, a lot of young kids don't want to clean up. Yeah. They don't want to but do it, that. And even if it's even if they don't want to do it long term, it's still it's things that you can take from it. Like it's these lessons. It's always lessons um, that you can take from anything that you do. Like, but and you need that discipline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once you learn how to work hard for your money, like that's one of the biggest things I always learned. Like my yeah. dad used to always tell us. He didn't really like giving us money. He's like, if you work hard for something, you have to buy with your own money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Appreciate it yeah. mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's something, you know, summertime kids are about to get out of school, so maybe that's something they could just do. Yeah, but the summer. Something mm-hmm. So how how far do y'all branch out? Is it just in Spartanburg? Like I said, y'all are, are in Union. Like how far do y'all travel for the for the cleaning business? Spartanburg, Greenville, Charlotte, we Myrtle to, Beach. We went to the beach. Um, went to Atlanta. Oh, we went to Atlanta. That's big. Um, went to the mountains. Oh, yeah, went to the mountains. Uh-huh. What is that? What is that feeling like knowing that people are like you have clients that that want you to come out that far? And, it feels good. Uh-huh. Like I love it. I love it. Do you? Uh, how do y'all balance like the? Uh, is it tough balancing like the work life balance? Because you know, as an entrepreneur, it's it's tough because you like constantly on go all the time. Yeah. Like, your mind is always thinking about something that's like what's next. Um, like, is it tough balancing that work life balance? Like, how do you guys um, balance? I mean, we stand, stand doing, stand balancing. Yes. It's, it's not. I try to take at least a day off during mm-hmm. the week to be with my family. But on my day off, people call me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, I don't want to miss the money, but then yet, I have my family too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of those things, man. Mm-hmm. Just gotta, that work life balance. It's, it's always tough, but mm-hmm. just, I don't know. You, you want to you wanna do it, but then it's like, man, you gotta. You know, learn when to say mm-hmm. no from certain things. Yeah, yeah like I guess no. I was um, I was I'm reading a book now, um, Made in America by Sam Walton, and uh, the, the man who built Walmart started mm-hmm. from scratch, and his work <laughs> ethic was, it's it's crazy, like it's insane just to see how his mind worked and how he had this vision for things that he was just constantly, you know, on go. And even when he would try to take vacations with his kids. You know, he would always stop by, like, this was back in, like, the 40s and 50s when mm-hmm. they, like, when the Kroger and Kmart first started all these stores. And he would just, even when he's on vacation, he's taking his kids with him, walking in these stores just to see how they do stuff. You know, on his off days, taking a notepad and just writing stuff down, just picking these people's brains aside and just, like, their work ethic was mm-hmm. so insane. Mm-hmm. It was like he could never really get away from his business because he was always tied into it. Mm-hmm. It paid off, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Big, big time. time. Big time. Mm-hmm. Big time. Mm-hmm. He, he always said one of the things I, I just stuck out to me, I'm still reading it now, is just like, you know, he, he hopes that his work, work ethic passes down for generations. He doesn't mm-hmm. want the kids to uh, rest on their laurels and just think, well, we got this money now. We, we good yeah. and not have to do mm-hmm. anything. But um, it's, it's just crazy. And speaking of that, it's passing things down for generations. That's something that you guys look to with this business. Yes. Um, pass something down for it family yes yeah. to my kids i take them to work with me now mm-hmm. they're not doing anything laying around the house playing the game like come on you want to make some money mm-hmm. so i take them and train them and show them different things to do it's, it's important that mm-hmm. i have my son yeah. over here but even though he, he sometimes he'll com- cry and complain but a lot of times he want to come with me and just sit up under me all the time but then i was like he's he doesn't have to do this but you know, just show them, just show them, mm-hmm. show like this is an option. You'd be surprised what kids notice. They they notice a lot. Mm-hmm. They, they may not say it, but they notice a lot. Mm-hmm. And oh, they take yeah. it in. And even now, if I put my camera up to them and start recording, one of the first thing you're gonna say, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. Channel. <laughs> I say it all the time, so it's all it's like he already ready to go. They know what to do. Them kids know. Smart. They, oh, they, yeah, they man, know. they take a tablet, a phone, or anything, and they can just pull pull up whatever yeah. they need. But you know, it's one thing he's like, man, make sure y'all subscribe to my YouTube channel. So it's like he already had it in his mind, you know, yeah. if that's something we want to do, I'm um, it's the choice is his, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always say I, I don't want to force anything on him, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I just want him to like just show him like, okay, you can you can go to school, get a job, or you can go um, be an entrepreneur and you know create your own opportunity. Yeah. So for you guys with your children, is that something like? Which way are you you wanting them to lean, or, or is it strictly up to them? Like, do you want them to kind of go? They all different. Yeah. You got three. They they all totally they all different. different. They <laughs> yeah, they just all different. So I I I truly doubt they. <laughs> Now one of them probably ain't going Oh, don't say that. Because Brendan, my baby boy, every time I take him with me, he's clocking his hours. Like, he's, my mom can pay this much, right? Okay, we'll be here for three hours. Okay, this <laughs> yeah, he just time won't he, he, he's he's like, yeah. he's going to clean up. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to take him with me. Yeah. See, nice, man. The other two? <laughs> the other two. Brooklyn and the YouTube. Yeah. So, yeah. YouTube, man. Kanye, too. Kanye ain't going to be in. <laughs> Yeah, he gonna. <laughs> <laughs> As they get older, though, man, they gonna, gonna change. Yeah, they gonna, gonna change. Some of, some of the stuff is gonna come their way, and they go change. But like I said, YouTube. Who would have thought when we were growing up, man, that was something like you can make millions of dollars just just doing crazy stuff. People just mm-hmm. holding up. It's like nowadays, people really just want to see what you have going on. Yeah, like people actually look before they actually hit the like button. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. you can get. People want to see what you're doing, but people yeah. don't want to like really, your stuff. Like what you want to watch. Yeah, I don't, don't want a lot of that. Yeah, it's crazy. Like if you post something like in your uh, story or something, you have, have four hundred yeah. views, and but you, have, you like, post that same likes. picture, like, you got like. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a hard thing too with starting your business. A lot of people they don't want to support, they don't like it, they don't share it. But I think people should start doing it because they help people. Really you, might you never not, know you who might know who. No, it helps you, but that helps you get business. Yeah, that's why. I, that's how I found you guys. Like I said, when uh, it was so many people just started sharing it. Yeah. And I just, I'm always, you know, looking up. I'm always doing research on entrepreneurs and, and just trying to find more guests for us to have on our platform. And as I said, when people started sharing, you gotta share people's stuff. Support mm-hmm. their business. It's but you know, I, I, I saw this meme one time. It was it was crazy. Um. It was just a meme. Somebody posted something. It was something along the lines of, "Hey, I just found a new job, thank God or whatever." And 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 it had a, like over a hundred likes or whatever. But then when somebody started a business, hey, I just started my. I seen business. that one. Yeah, it was like I seen that. One. Nobody, nobody really. Yeah, yeah I really. Wonder, what is it? You don't want me to come up. You don't want to make money. What is it? Mm-hmm. But you don't and have to share. And especially like if if like you doing something similar to what that person is doing, it's like one of those things where. For some reason, I guess they feel like it's competition. Like you taking away from them. Mm-hmm. You know how many burgers joints in? How much bread in the store? The Foot goal. action, Jimmy J. Yeah. They all got the same shoes. It's like it's they're just, different. The goal is to be different. Mm-hmm. If you if someone have a cleaning business, the same thing like us. Everything we do just be different. Why should it's a million poppers around here? Yeah, like yeah. That's another thing. Uh, Sharon Green uh, said with well, her cleaning business, she said she actually had one of her clients. That was working up under her. Mm-hmm. She said they left just so they could start their own business. Um, and she's like, "You could have stayed here a little bit longer, and I could have showed you mm-hmm. like how to how to learn the ropes or whatever." She said the clients that some of the clients that I have that I don't really need or whatever, like that, that I have too many. I could have gave you some yeah. of these clients. Like, yeah. Sometimes you know it's all right to like work with somebody and yeah. you know, have them show you the ropes and stuff. But, but a lot mm-hmm. of times, like I said, people don't want to do that. No. It's always it feel like it's just competition for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's more than, like I said, it's it shouldn't more be that way. It shouldn't. It's more than enough money. Yeah. For everybody. Yep. Sometimes when I don't have the help, I'm like, I wanna find somebody with the clean business that can come in and help me, but mm-hmm. and it it'll help so much to kinda mm-hmm. take it off of you, but it it's like you said, it's like a Walmart, like you said, all the burger came and yeah, it's, everything. It's it's more than like even a podcast, like it's Thousands of podcasts. Yeah. It's like it's it's so much. Like you're not gonna be the only one. No. Right. And especially when people see that they're successful, somebody's gonna gonna try to imitate it and put mm-hmm. their own spin on it mm-hmm. and and do their own thing. It's like okay, and then you can always learn from somebody else as well. Yes. You can learn from everybody. Everybody. Yeah. You can learn something from anybody. Really. A few more questions, and then we'll get ready to wrap it up shortly. Um, mm-hmm. how do you guys feel like marriage has helped? Um in your own journey for entrepreneurship okay so when we started we just got married last year the oh, pandemic yeah, last it year was, so it is everything's new oh. yeah. everything's new yeah, we've been married for a year yeah february yeah. everything so it's it's new is we're still learning as go learn the business learning marriage learning 
hey, life, because the COVID switched life around, so you're just learning every day. You just got to keep going, but. Did y'all get to have a wedding? Because this was like, nah. right now. Nah, we, we went to the courthouse. Yeah. That was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was fine. I know my one of my best friends, he actually had, uh, he, won, he was supposed to have got married last year in May, and when COVID hit, because he was going to be down in Charleston. I was in the wedding, but, you know, yeah. COVID happened. It just, it changed everything. Everything. Mm, everything. What what would you say was the biggest lesson that y'all actually learned from the from this pandemic? You better hustle. Yeah. You better find a way to get find a hustle. Find a hustle. Because that job is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and life's gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna spend money every day, so try to make something every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But people, I know, I think I, that's why I think I was hoping that was one of the things people took away from. Like nothing is guaranteed. Nothing. Like, they always preach to us, man. You get this job, you get great benefits. You just stay there until you retire. Like you stay, mm -hmm. stay, stay. But like I say, in the blink of an eye, something like this happens again. Yes. It don't matter if you don't put thirty, forty years into this company. Like it's over with. Like, yeah. Something happens, but it's like we just kind of condition, and it's not just our people. It's just people in general. Like overall, like. They just, we just give these best years of our life to these major corporations yeah, and just thinking we're just going to stay there and then, yo. Nah, I don't. And you on, and you yeah. on their time. It's like, yeah. yeah. You on the route, you on the schedule, really. Yeah. Come they don't on, care about bro. your family. They want you there all day. Every day. Mm -hmm. They don't care about that. <laughs> but that's, that's one of the things that, what about, about having a job, which I, I mean, I still work my job and do this as well, but I'm like, it's, it's a little bit flexible, but I still, something about it, it's like, I know, it's coming to a point where we're going to have to, especially with some of the things we have lined up now, yeah. um, we're going to have to break away because it's just going to be too time consuming. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just having to ask them, hey, can I, can I, can I get this out and so I can go mm -hmm. somewhere? And it's just like, but, but the thing is, if you ask majority of people, man, like we talk, most people, if you say, man, I'm just working, I'm just paying bills on the main thing they're going to take, but working to the real world. So you actually think no, like, but that's how it's supposed to be. No. But, you know, that's why I say, man, I encourage people, you know, you don't, even if you don't want to start your own business, maybe go work up on somebody else that has their own business. Mm -hmm. Learn from them, learn some skills, get a different trade or something that you can take and whatever hobby that you're passionate about, do it that way instead of, you know, giving them all of your life. But, you know, it's one of those things, man, we, we just don't do it enough. Um, Normally, I, this pet question right here, this should be good. Normally, we like to ask people, um, <laughs> if you could talk to your younger self, what would you tell yourself to do oh, um, differently? So, what I want to do is, <laughs> and then I, want to, I want you to talk to the young Fred and see, tell him what, what he should do. And then, Fred, I want you to give her some advice of what the younger end and what she should do. Why would her? Either way, either way. Go, Fred, Trick. The younger Indian, what she should do. Mm. <laughs> That's a good question, yeah. Mm. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> the young girl for you. Uh. I told you I couldn't give you all the questions away. Ask it again. Let me let me let me. What would let you tell pray. the younger India that she should do? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Dang, that's a good one. Like, you gotta. You got me on that. Oh. Y'all were the first. Because we've had a cleaning business on, but we never had. We had multiple guests on, but I don't think we ever had. Just going through our catalog, I don't think we ever had a married couple come on at the same time. Like, we oh. had people that were married. Yeah. But they've never been on at the same time, so y'all are the first. What you say, a younger? Just like, what kind of advice would you give them? Just like, you know. Um, nah, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> say it. <laughs> say it. It might be. Nah. I ain't gonna say that. My advice to you would be. Hmm. It could be anything. Like, I'll give you. Just believe in yourself. Don't use that one. Yeah. Right. Like, just um, believe in yourself. Anything, you know. Keep up the good word. The things you do keep up the good work. Uh, younger. Um, what else would I tell the younger you? Mm -hmm. 
He got a lot. He can say a lot. I don't know. <laughs> say something. What would you tell the younger me? Okay, younger you. Okay. Stop quitting all them jobs. Like, oh, work man. hard like you work hard like you work hard on this one. Yeah. Quit job, <laughs> Stop quitting all them jobs. Every other week, I quit. Yes. I quit. I, I'm not going to They talk to play me. I quit. I quit. I quit. Well, you know, it paid off. Yeah. That's a good one. Quit. Quit. Oh, quit. Yeah. Just, just quit. quit. Just quit. Just quit. I'm quitting. Like, quit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, man, they try to play. I quit. Yeah, they try to play me. You quit again? Yeah, I quit. So, cool, man. Cool. Would you even last a week or just? Uh, no, I'm quit. I will call him and be like, "Hey, I gotta quit because they trying to play me." And, and Madeline did the same thing. Though. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, Madeline did the same thing. Try to play me. And you just quit. quit. Like I was serious. I'm serious about it. I was quit. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I ever just quit like on the, on the fly. I think the the cookies um, that I got let go from a job was. Uh, my first meet up stay when I was working at um, Pizza Hut, the one when it was on West Side by the mall. Yeah. And, uh, man, I used to hate it. I used to miss people pizza up all the time. <laughs> on purpose? Not on purpose. Oh. I what I was doing. No, I love oh. no, it was just so fast paced that oh, okay. I was just like four or five pizzas coming at a time, and I'm brand new and I don't know anything. They didn't really show me, so I'm putting the wrong toppings on there. I got to stay in there <laughs> Saturday night. It's 12, 1 30 in the morning. I'm ready to go home. Yeah. So then they called me one day and said, Hey, come pick up your check. We got to uh, talk to you or something. And I was there. It was like, I was only there for like 30 days. And they were just like, it was, I guess like my probation period or whatever there. And they let me go. But I was glad because I didn't like doing it. So yeah. like, it was cool to me. I was like, Man, I ain't. Mm -mm. That was the quickest I ever got let go from a job. Most of them, it's been times where I left jobs, but um, that was the fastest. Like, oh, I never just, I, I never went. For like a couple of hours, and they just say, "I'm out." We quit that job. Yeah. Oh, we quit one job together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it was on break, and I was like, "No, I we, can't do this." I was pregnant. Yeah, we were pregnant. We came late. We, we was already about late, <laughs> and we got in the parking lot. And I was already was feeling. I looked at her. She looked at me. She was like, "You want to quit?" Like, it's me. I said, <laughs> <laughs> "Let's roll." Back to this, but yeah. you be there with me though. But I need to. Yeah. Teamwork. So, so y'all know we're like y'all get jobs together and just try. Yes, to yes, we work jobs together. Yeah, this ain't the first one. This ain't the first one. And then we just always quit. work together. <laughs> no, <laughs> we say I stayed at Matna for a long time though. Three years. Three. Okay. So three years. Three. That was my longest job. Yeah. And every. I hate that job. But you still. I mean, at least you, I went to work every day. day. But every time when I worked there, I always had a hustle. I sold lashes, shoes, food. Everything and finally, when I thought about this hustle, I quit. This is one that this is the one that I like, I really loved. That was one of the best answers I've heard on here. Like, <laughs> stop quitting, stop, stop quitting, quitting. Like, stop quitting. Quit. Quit. How you no, gonna no, be by the way? You keep quitting, it, right? it did, never but quit. I'm just saying, never don't quit this. Then, oh, find never. Find I never quit. This. I'm trying to expand, don't she quit. Made me clean. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to expand, I'm trying to have a laundry service. So people come drop their clothes off when I'm not, it's gonna be a washer dry and fold mm -hmm. But it's so it's, it's, it's yours, so of course you're gonna enjoy yeah. doing it more, yeah. uh, even more. Yeah. And uh just something else with Sharon, I know I keep talking about it just cause y'all had yeah, that similar business, business, but she was saying I think her first year I made she made a did maybe like sixty to seventy thousand. Then she went to six figures and she said by the time we interviewed her last year, mm -hmm. she had said her business had surpassed that six figure number that you know that she was doing then, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's constantly growing, man. And of course, she I'm pretty sure she'll she don't mind. She's in Chatt Chattanooga, Tennessee, but she one of those people like real down there. She showed us love when we were out there, um, so of course, she'll definitely. Um, I'm yeah. sure I can make that connection and yeah, uh, let I you talk her. to her. Mm -hmm. She she really good people, man. But it's just like one of those things, you know. It kind of was the same way before it kind of started out as a hobby, and then she started getting a couple of contracts, and then after that, you know, she was like, you know what. She had everything lined up. She had a plan on. Uh, she was telling us, um, well, it's on camera anyway. She was like, you know, I got my job and I got this bitch. She said, once I get my house and everything, she said, this job, she said, she's going she's gonna to have to leave. Uh -oh. <laughs> but she she's doing great, man. I was like, it's 
that's inspiration right there. Like, you know, somebody, you know, she took a hobby and then she said she started really enjoying it mm-hmm. and turned into something that she does full time. And she said, you know, having people that can work under her and, and she shows them the ropes and everything. She said, that's a, a blessing. Yeah. Yes. They have blessing. somebody that's willing to, got the same passion mm-hmm. as you do for your, for your business. Mm-hmm. Does she still work? Like, um, I'm not sure she's still working out. I know she, she got a house now. Um, well, she she got a house built. I don't know if they moved in just yet. They ain't moved in yet? No. <laughs> yeah, Tell them to drop the be, attic. You know? <laughs> drop the attic. Yeah. <laughs> and she, uh, but um, I'm, I'm not sure she's still um, at her job. I know she said when she got the house, like, it's built. Um, she probably getting ready to uh, leave or whatever. But uh, she, the way her business is going. Tell her hit me up. Gotcha. I, 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 I definitely, and then she's watching the shot she run, man. She she was definitely a uh, great people, man. She showed us a good time, told us what to eat and everything. We really? were down there, yeah. It's, um she's really good people though, so I definitely had to reach back out to her. Um just a few more questions. Um I know y'all say y'all were from you and like what what did your hometown mean to you? Because I know a lot of people from home are gonna watch this. Like what did your hometown mean to you? I love you. It's just yeah. sometimes sometimes. Sometimes you Sometimes you outgrow your your surroundings. Yes. That don't mean you bigger than some. You just it's more than home. Right. It's more. It's more. It's in the world. It's more in the world. Like just in summer, you just go anywhere and get something to eat. Mm-hmm. You mean you only got really Burger King, KFC, or so? Mm-hmm. You only got. That's why so much people that can cook in you is. It's to do because everybody get tired of eating the same food from mm-hmm. the same restaurants. There's no restaurants. You got McDonald's, Zaxby's, Burger King, the Taco Bell. You really ain't got nowhere to dine Dario. in. Dario. Dario. Battle Chef. You ain't got nowhere to dine in, dine in. I haven't been there in a while, though. Oh. I ain't been there in a while. Though. Only restaurant you can probably sit down and eat and drink is Mexican restaurant, really. But yeah. it's everywhere up here in Spumberg. Buffalo Seafood. I mean, and Donald's. They got alcohol now? No. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, he's saying you like feel what I'm saying? You can't, oh, you can't right. go nowhere and just sit down and eat. Have a drink. Besides going to the Mexican restaurant. Yeah, you need to get more bars. Yeah. Yeah. They brought Arby's. Yeah, I saw that. Arby's. Arby's ain't you. Shush. I mean, I, man, I'm just I mean, being I, real I, though. I, Arby's I, I, ain't nothing to be. I, I love the community. Um, I'm from Jonesville, so we right there beside y'all. So, right. I mean, we, we really don't have much either. The cafe is really good. That's, that's it. But see, when, when they moved out of school, like, we really don't have. Um, that, that, was, that, was, that was that was that was what yeah. really brought people in, especially on Friday nights when we had yeah. our games. And the basketball games be live though. Oh, especially when we played y'all. Yeah, that was live. We used to get beat. <laughs> that be live though. We got beat. That was live though. But I remember them. I remember them. We just talk about everything, but it's cool. <laughs> but uh, Terrell, I remember the first one I went to, because you know our school was 7th through 12th grade. Uh-huh. So when I got it, uh, basically when I got to 7th grade, we basically it was like high school for us. So I remember going to the game, and uh, we used to get in free because we played JV. And I remember Trevor coming in, and he just, he was just dominating, man. He was just so big. <laughs> and you see him, just dunking, like just gliding through the air. I was like, man, we used to get beat, but you know. They used to be the game to go to though. Mm-hmm. That was like yeah. the game when the gym used to be packed. Mm-hmm. Packed, packed. Mm-hmm. It's a good old times, man. But I, I think now I hope we start bringing stuff like my best friend, one of my best friends, Dwight. You know, he got the car wash. That was the KB's car care that I was yeah. talking about. He got the car wash in Jonesville, and um, but I don't know. It just seemed like once they, once we combine, like they, I feel like they really hurt business in Jones. It's a lot of talented people in Union. Yes, mm-hmm. and they can make a lot of more money mm-hmm. in a different area. Mm-hmm. You, if what they do, if they was to go, probably 30, 40 minutes away, mm-hmm. they can get. But see, that's, that's what's. I still feel like that'll be part of our problem though, because if we if we just have all of our talented people leave, mm-hmm. then what we gonna have? Mm-hmm. So I, I feel I feel like we need to get away. For them to, you know, I, we, of course you gotta support them, but it's, it's yeah. got to be some kind of way where we can keep them in the yeah, area yeah, yeah. instead of like leaving all the time. It, it just depends. Yes, it, it, it really just depends. <laughs> but it's. <laughs> like I remember hearing yeah. the conversation before that somebody was telling me I'm not gonna say the name. That like, man, you. It's like you'd be surprised how many millionaires live in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot yeah. Of money, but it's people yeah. from outside, and it's a lot of people from outside. Our area that's like moving down that way, just 
Just it's cheaper to live. live. It's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. It's cheaper to live. Yeah. And a lot of people move. It's a lot of money there. And it's crazy that people from outside, they want to move down there, but the people that's here, they want to, you know. It's calm. I think it's, it's calm, though, for the most part. It's kind of. I think you and you can kind of walk everywhere in there. In your oh, yeah. 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 There's no really different sides. Like you guys remember, you got West Side, mm -hmm. North Side. It is. Mm -hmm. You can kind of walk there and get there in everywhere in an hour, yeah. two hours, everywhere in Union, walking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's one small town where everybody know everybody. Yeah. Oh, you know somebody that knows somebody. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Everybody, it's like a close-knit community. But, um, but yeah, that's one of my things, man. We just got to figure out a way to keep people there. It's like, if we have all of our talented people leave, then what? It's, it's, it's I understand. That's a, that makes sense. So for y'all, um, future goals. What what goals do you have um, for your business going forward? Get more trucks. Yeah, more box trucks. Headquarters. Yes. Uh, the laundry service. Yeah. It's my goal. Hire more people. Yes. Uh, give back. Yes, I want to give back to the community. Uh, you know. It's major, man. Keep putting smiles on people. Thanksgiving. Plan on giving back to the community Christmas. That's major, it, and I promise you, it, it, it can happen. I don't want to sound like I, I got all the answers to everything, but I just know, man, like when you really work towards something mm -hmm. and just have that vision, like it can, you can make a lot of things happen. Like I, I got, I'll tell y'all some stuff about when we um, finish this interview. Um, we got some things coming up, man. It just started with just having a goal. Like I said, well, even with my book, you know, I just. Kind of time back in the when you say you go quit your job. I, I did quit this job. I forgot about this. <laughs> you quit. Yeah, I quit. Okay. But I, at least I stayed maybe a year and a half. I did quit, though. <laughs> I did quit. It was uh, right around my brother. He was getting ready to get married. And uh, they wanted me to work that Friday before the uh, the uh, reception. Because I was going to have to work that day and then drive all the way down to Charleston. And I was like, man, I don't feel like doing this, man. So I, I worked just, I worked maybe like an hour and then I quit. But I, I kept constantly telling myself, you know what, man, I'm going to just quit this job. Like, I'm writing this book. So I quit the job, went home, and I just started writing that book. And, um, you know, I just had to go, like, I started writing all, all my goals and I just had a vision. I said, part of one of the things I want to do is write my book. And, um, I, like I said, I constantly tell myself, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. I even recorded myself on my old phone my son had over there. Mm. Well, I recorded myself saying, I'm going to quit. I recorded the date that I said I was going to do it and everything. And then you quit. I quit. Prep yourself up. Nothing ain't wrong. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with it. But I mean, I did you have my other job. I, I was working two jobs, so I did have my other one to fall back on. But I always said in my mind, I was like, I'm going to quit here. I said, I'm going to write this book. And I did it. And it's just like, man, like the stuff that I started writing down, like I can start scratching it off my uh -huh. list. And stuff. It's great. It's, a, it's amazing to feel like you'd be amazed just when you write stuff down and you go back and look at it. Um, and we're gonna be able to go back That's to look my at this problem. interview. That's my problem. Well, write stuff down. I don't write it down. I, I think I, if I start, maybe. I promise you, like I don't know what it is, and I and I see a lot because I pay attention to a lot of entrepreneurs. I don't really watch like a lot of um, TV shows. Like if somebody asks me right now, what's the best TV show? I'm, I don't know. Um, most of Law the and Order. Yeah. I'm just entrepreneurs. <laughs> um, last TV show I really was invested in was Power. Before oh, Ghost yes. got killed. Yeah. Yeah. After that, that, then I was like, you know what, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. But I just started paying attention to a lot of entrepreneurs, and um, and a lot of them were saying the same thing. You know, writing down your goals, and just having this vision of what you want to do. And I remember just start. I just started writing, and writing a book was one of them, man. And and I finally got it done. It took me about three years, okay. but I finally got it done back in uh, March. Had a book signing and everything. But it's just like, man. It might sound corny to a lot of people, but when you sit down and like write what you really want, mm -hmm. you'll be amazed at some of the stuff that's gonna happen, man. And it, I was like, you know what? I'm like I said, I'm gonna tell y'all some stuff when we when we wrap this interview up. But just I promise you, just write down your goals. You'll be amazed at some of the stuff that um, that you can accomplish. But I did quit my job too, so don't don't feel bad about that part. How? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you don't feel bad. <laughs> I know you don't feel bad, but back then that was a long time ago. 
Yeah. But man, but you know what I tell people though, you know what? When these jobs ready for us to leave, they gonna walk us out. They don't right. give us a, they yeah. don't give us a two week notice yeah. or anything. It's like they they, they'll let you work your whole shift. And, and, and walk you know, out of Don't play me like yeah. that. You know? <laughs> they they, they, they <laughs> have me one though. They fired me though. They got me. They got me though. Still she gonna try to act like Tell me I didn't show up. I said, so why you call me soon I get off? If, if, if it's show I didn't show up today. You waited till I got off and then call. Tell you, that that's why I said, man, that'll be the one thing that made me mad. Like if I work a whole shift yeah. and then you say we gotta let you go. Tell me before. Before I, I get there. Yeah, that way I know I can go back email. home. Yeah. At least Pizza Hut, when they let me go, Pizza I was up. Yeah, my first meal. Oh, yeah, when yeah, I went yeah, to 30 yeah, days, yeah. 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 They, uh, they just called me to come in and pick my check up. Fired on my day off. <laughs> <laughs> Fired on my day off. Yep. I just thought about it, too. Fired on my day off. Yep. They called me, told me to come pick up a check. They sat me down and talked to me, and... and it's like my they work I'd work my thirty days but they weren't gonna keep me. I wasn't mad. I just didn't like it. Mm-hmm. I just needed something to you know put some money in my pocket. Plus I ain't have bills and no kids anyway at that time, so yeah. it didn't bother me. Mm-hmm. But I did get fired. My man, y'all breaking back a lot of. <laughs> I'm taking me back down. Lane, man, I got fired. It's, I fired. I quit a job, but growth. I could just say it's just growth. Growth. It's growth. growth. It's growth. It's growth. Yeah. Learn, man. It just. That's, what, that's all I said. Life, life is your best teacher. You're going to just live, live and learn from experience. Yeah. But my final question before we get out of here, for both of you guys, um, what does self-investment mean to you? I mean, who else? If you don't bet on yourself and invest in yourself, then mm-hmm. really who is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, who can you count on besides yourself Self. for the most part? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you you can do it, but you gotta you gotta present what you offer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows what you offering if you ain't. Nobody's gonna right. buy if you're not offering it. Right. You gotta right. put it out there, and mm-hmm. then who knows? You never know who needs. They might not need it, but they might know somebody else that needs need the service. Mm-hmm. And so, present what you offer, mm-hmm. and hey. And that's part of you know being supportive. Like sometimes. People can't support you if they don't know yeah. right. what you have. So, right. so it go it goes hand in hand. But like I said, power social media, put it out there. Um, like I said, this is how this this interview came together because like I said, the power of social media, people support it. And um I just came across it, so definitely um wanted um glad I could have you guys on. Thank you. Um but hopefully everybody enjoyed this interview. Um hopefully you got some laughs out of this interview. Yeah. Um, you got some answers that I never even Heard of before? It was crazy, but I, I really enjoyed this, man. This is fun. We definitely, you know, if you guys have anything, you know, you're more than welcome. This is a platform where you can come back to. 
But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this interview. Until next time, keep chasing your dreams. This is the Cross the Line Podcast. Thank you for listening. Hey, I'm Frederick Bates with She Made Me Clean Moving Services. I'm India Chanel. She Made Me Clean Cleaning Services. And we tune in to Cross the Line Podcast.